Pedro Stasio was a starting pitcher who played for 15 seasons in Major League Baseball from 1992 to 2006. He played for eight different teams, but spent most of his career with the Los Angeles Dodgers and Colorado Rockies. He took the baseball role by storm in his rookie year for the Dodgers, going 5-5 with a 1.98 ERA in 82 innings pitched across 11 games started. He threw a complete game shutout with 10 strikeouts in his Major League debut, one of the greatest big league debuts of all time. Perhaps the most unbelievable part was that he threw four shutouts that season. He's still the most recent rookie to throw that many shutouts in a season. That rookie season in 92 would be the highlight of his career, and he struggled following that year. He would have a few decent seasons in the 90s, but was an average to below average pitcher for most of his career. In his career, he has a lifetime 129 and 124 record, pitched nearly 2200 innings, recorded an ERA of 4.67, adjusted ERA of 97, a whip of 1.374, and a war of 25.6. To put it lightly, he was a decent but forgettable player. Despite a long career in baseball, he never made an all-star team, never received Cy Young votes, and never played in a World Series. He never threw a no-hitter or was ever a part of a notable event. He never led the league in wins, strikeouts, innings, ERA, or anything like that. He did in fact lead the league in multiple categories, earned runs allowed once, hit by pitches twice, and home runs allowed three times. However, despite the overlooked and boring career, Astachio had one of the most confusing pitching seasons ever. On paper, it makes no sense and requires a large amount of context to understand. The season in question was his 1999 season. That year, Astachio went 17 and 11, started 34 games, threw 232 innings, recorded an ERA of 5.04, a 1.435 whip, and struck out 8.1 batters per 9 innings. He threw 7 complete games and led the National League in a single statistic, home runs allowed. Simply looking at these stats, it doesn't look great. Sure, he threw a lot of innings and struck out many batters, but his ERA and whip, especially his ERA, are downright terrible. Or are they? Surely nobody would ever say an ERA over 5 or a whip over 1.4 is good, but in Astachio's case, they were both great. In fact, despite the lousy stats there, Astachio had a fantastic season. How so? Well, there are two statistics I didn't mention yet. Two that juxtapose Astachio's poor looking ERA. In 1999, his adjusted ERA was 115 and his war was 5.9. 5.9 war. Among all pitchers in Major League Baseball in 1999, Astachio's 5.9 war ranks 8th highest and his adjusted ERA ranks 26th highest among qualified starters. For comparison, fellow starter Kevin Millwood, who pitched just 4 innings fewer than Astachio, recorded an ERA of 2.68, nearly half of that of Astachio, yet Millwood earned only a slightly more amount of war. Astachio's 1999 season is unique. There has never been a pitcher who was simultaneously that bad and that good at the same time. To see just how much of an anomaly Astachio's 1999 season was, let's compare it to other seasons all time. Among all pitchers in the history of baseball through the 2022 season, Astachio's 5.9 war is the highest for any pitcher in a single season to record an ERA of 5.04 or higher. He's in first place by a significant margin. How significant? Only 5 pitchers in MLB history ever achieved that at least 5.9 war with an ERA at or higher than 4.50, and Astachio is the only one to do it since the 1800s. It is quite difficult to achieve 5.9 or more war with a high ERA. Only 14 pitchers ever achieved that amount of war with an ERA over 4, and Astachio is one of 3 to do it since World War II. His war outpaces everyone else, however, that is slightly clunky. Many of these pitchers achieved much war due to mass amounts of innings pitched. Let's set the maximum threshold to 275 innings, about 50 more than Astachio's feet. If we look at every pitcher in the history of baseball to earn an ERA of 5.04 or higher at or lower than 275 innings pitched in a single season and sort by war, 
Astachio's record of 5.9 is nearly double that of second place, which was set by Pedro Astachio himself just one year later. Continuing with the bizarreness, among all pitchers in history to have an adjusted ERA of 115 or better in a single season, Astachio's 5.04 ERA is the highest ever and the only instance with an ERA over 5. If we look at pitchers since integration and raise the minimum threshold to 100 innings, Astachio is one of two pitchers that earn both an adjusted ERA of at least 115 and an ERA at or over 4.50. He also pitched a tremendous amount of innings in 1999, 232 exactly. In MLB history, there are only 36 instances in which a pitcher pitched that many innings to also record an ERA at or higher than 5.04. Astachio is one of two pitchers to do this since the start of World War II and the only one in the past 70 seasons. In fact, 27 of these 36 instances occurred before 1900. Still among this group of 36, Astachio's 115 adjusted ERA is just one of three to be above average and naturally his war outpaces everyone else. However, that is also clunky. Just as before, many of these pitchers achieved much war due to mass amounts of innings pitched. 232 may be a lot, but it's nothing compared to what many others did and yet Astachio still outpaces all of them. Let's not forget he won an impressive 17 games. Among every pitcher to have an ERA of 5.04 in a single season, Astachio's 17 wins are tied for fourth most and again the most overall since World War II. This is one of the most bewildering seasons in MLB history. Pedro Astachio simultaneously posted terrible stats yet was also a terrific pitcher. For certain a top 25 and arguably a top 10 starter in 1999. The big question is, how is this possible? How could a pitcher achieve such a season like this? For those who watched my video about Dante Bichette, you'll already know. It's the same concept, but opposite for pitchers than hitters. Coors Field, the home of the Rockies, is naturally hitter friendly. There's much science behind it, but basically, because Denver is a high altitude city, the atmosphere there is thinner, which makes hit baseballs move higher and faster. What may have been a fly ball in any other stadium may end up being a home run at Coors Field. This disparity was even wider back in 1999. Currently, the Rockies keep the game baseballs in a humidifier prior to the game start in order to help curb this slight issue. 1999 was BEFORE the humidifier was introduced. Not to mention, 99 was in the heart of the steroid era, so hitting was at an all-time great. So, take historic hitting, put it in a mile high city without a humidifier and that produces epically great hitting which also means epically terrible pitching. In 1999 in particular, the average MLB team ERA was 4.70. What was the Rockies ERA that season? 6.01. That's also just total ERA. Their ERA at home that season was a staggering 7.14 compared to a road ERA of 4.84. Suddenly, Astachio's 5.04 ERA doesn't look too bad now, does it? It was only 0.34 points higher than average, but he had the unfortunate circumstance of pitching half his games at Coors Field. At Colorado that season, Astachio had an ERA of 7.16 in almost 100 innings pitched, right aligned with the Rockies average. On the road, 3.60 ERA. That's nearly half. Astachio was legitimately twice as good on the road than at home and that road ERA was a full run lower than the average MLB team ERA. Because pitching at Coors Field was incredibly grueling, it made his overall stats look much worse than how he actually was. That's why adjusted ERA exists, to adjust to these external factors such as ballpark and era. Astachio was a solid pitcher who has ERA artificially inflated giving the impression he was worse than he actually was. He was actually a terrific pitcher and rightfully earned that 5.9 war and 115 adjusted ERA. We may never see a season like Astachio's ever again. It would require a set of factors so specific and it's already incredibly rare to find a similar season throughout all of baseball history. It will go down as the most confusing, great season a pitcher ever had.